going to do a quick video of my fur slash uh, storage shed out here. Show you how I do these muskrats whenever I dry them. So I got three sitting here and one more in the box. <clears throat> you always want to hang them so that the water drains down the fur. Just like this. Right? These look ragged, but they're dry. So, it's called a cat paw. Do your line like that. Right? You don't have to tie a knot in it or anything. Just a cat's paw. Where'd you go? You're in there somewhere. I know you are. Snatch it around his little foot there. Tighten it up. I got the fan blowing. There you go. You don't have to tie knots in your lines or anything. Works really well. These are ones I just took down off of that line. Take my brush. Brush them out. First thing I like to do is grab their legs. Give them a little shaky shake. I go against the fur. As long as it's dry. Turns out well. And then come back down. Look how beautiful that is. Hmm? That is beautiful right there. You strip that off of them, dry it, or tan it and keep it. Now, because I'm not dealing with them right away, you lay him on his back and his belly won't turn green. Okay, now I'll do that for the rest of them, but. Got my beaver boards, uh, beaver drying right there. That's ready to come off. This is uh, carcasses and ducks. I got some guys that do bear baiting and they're gonna come pick this crap up. I got my fleshing beam attached to the wall. So it just folds down just like that. And then I can stand here, flesh. My muskrat fleshing bean. I made these, I made both of these out of a uh, two by, a two by six? I think it's two by six. Pretty sure it's two by six. Made both of them out of two by six. Your muskrat can't be the same size as the regular flesh and beam. It's just a different shape. Uh, Mink and Martin boards. Muskrat stretchers. I got some muskrats here that are ready to take off these boards. Jack Mason, the NAFA pickup guy, said uh, wood definitely definitely will get you more money on your muskrats what he said wipe that grease off of there that's what he said wood will definitely get you more money on your muskrats Let's see what this guy looks like whenever I pull him off there you go Probably a little overstretched, it looks like. <laughs> so, I'm going to try to get an interview with him. Do it in another video. Uh, tell fellas that are just getting into trapping how to sell the NAFA. How to sell their fur. You know, at least give them a place to start. I'm hoping that he'll let me do an interview with him and put it on YouTube because he's a wealth of knowledge 
smokes like a chimney but he's a wealth of knowledge so, brush this guy out there you go he's ready to skin ready to skin and dry man you've never seen a muskrat blanket they're beautiful and I'm tempted to next year tempted to keep a bunch of them and make a blanket but see how ragged that looks but cause it's dry whenever you brush it out it comes right to life look at that beautiful beautiful yep so look at that that's the difference in the two that's how you dry them that's how you take care of them it's your responsibility to take care of anything that you take i gotta do some work in here all right oh there's my casters and my oil sacks up there drying up i'm not selling them so i'm not real worried about how they look i'm gonna make my own lures and whatnot lures and baits so yep cool i want to now that i've gotten halfway decent at it i want to do a uh, muskrat skinning video first off this is the knife that i use and i use it for skinning everything besides beaver i also use it on beaver but of course you got your Dexter beaver knife, but for skinning muskrats, it's the Victor Knox paring knife. Blade's pretty flimsy, you know, not real stiff. Uh, it's got a good rounded edge. It's not, this back isn't, it's not, well, it's just like this one, but this one's a whole lot more stiff. It's not straight, right? It doesn't have a rounded edge like that. It's not straight on the back. This is an outstanding knife. They're only like four bucks wherever you find them. Always start off with it sharp. Okay. Take your muskrat, pull his little legs out because one of them will be all crimped up whenever he was hanging and one of them wasn't in hanging. Brush him out. Get him all beautiful. These are some nice muskrats. Go against the grain, then come down the grain. Sorry if I'm getting him out of frame. I have to remember to look down and hold stuff high. This is my small game gambrel. It's just some uh, purple poly rope that you buy from Walmart. You can get a roll of it for next to nothing. I got just a stick that I cut, you know, to spread the legs i got a couple hooks on here that i've i've uh filed the barbs off in case i have something that i need to hook in some hind quarters or something and then at the bottom of each one i got a loop so if i got a fox or a mink or something like that i can spread his legs and he's easier to work for muskrats <laughs> you just take that sucker I've done it three or four different ways. I looked at every YouTube video I could look at. This is the way I found was easiest. Hook it on the tail and pull that down. Now, my gambrel goes up, goes through an eye bolt, comes through an eye bolt, and I've got a, a locking cleat that you buy for a kayak. Got it off of eBay for like four or five bucks or something. I've been using that for years, though, for uh, skinning racks. This one was a small game. It works great. I don't do anything but go in right there. 
uh, right at that behind that Achilles tendon or whatever it's called. Make my insertion. You can go down into the meat. Come up, get about right there. And then I grab that leg, pull down, and my knife blade just follows that tailbone up. Now I'm going slow for the camera, but I'm, I'm not real fast anyway. Get about halfway, and you can feel the center of that thing. You can feel that bone if you just stick that knife down in there. You can feel it. I don't want to mess it up just because I'm going slow. Okay, come up about an inch on the tail. Then I grab one side. Doesn't really matter which side it is. And I just loosen it up, loosen that meat up. All right, go all the way through and I follow that tail skin up, cut right there. I usually do always go belly side first. That you can either cut or you can pull either way, it really doesn't make a difference but if you have a sharp knife it sure makes a, makes a difference with just pushing through there you know now I have found that if I use the knife on this particular part to get everything started to about right there where the belly starts I'm much less likely to tear the hide okay put my knife down reach in there with two hands separate and I'm separate I'm not pulling the skin I'm working my fingers down in there to push the belly away from the skin okay I'm not pulling the skin from the belly I'm pulling the belly from the skin and fortunately I did just go through but it's all right it smells a little bit but it doesn't do anything grab the back side same thing, you're just separating the meat from the hide right there. And I'm going slow. Same thing with that tail. Bada boom. Now the thing about the back side. <clears throat> There's a couple really strong tendons that grip the back of this hide. If you just try to pull it, it will have a tendency of tearing the hide. And there's one right here that runs down this side. And there's one right here that runs down this side. And all you need to do is just start it to where it's not holding on. Okay? And the same thing. The difference on the back is I'm pulling the hide away from the back because the back meat's not going to tear or anything, so I'm pulling the hide away from the back. Alright, stick my thumb right there on the leg, pull it all the way up to that ankle joint, and pull. On the other side, that's what I'm looking at. I've already, you can see how thin it is. I've skinned it out. Just stick my thumb in between there, pull it all the way up, and pull it. It pops off. If you, once you get halfway decent, and by that I can pull this thing up to my height that I want it. I'm hoping that I got you guys seeing this whole thing. Some people at this point will just pull the hide. And I have a tendency whenever I just pull the hide, it pops that belly. And on this one, I pop the belly whenever I was separating it, so it really doesn't matter. But normally, it's just better if I just take this and I'm going to raise it again for you guys. Normally, I wouldn't. I'm going to raise it up. All right, so you got all this tendon that's following this hide. And if you just cut through it, 
it'll get off the hide and that's less you have to flesh All right so I'm squeezing I'm just squeezing it and just kind of pulling down at the same time I'm cutting through that membrane I am NOT cutting the hide in any way okay be careful because right now this hide is all the way up here right here it's all the way down by his shoulders but in here it's all the way up here at his neck okay so once you get to this point right see if I can open it up a little bit that's the ear just like that that's the ear hole okay same thing on the other side just take your time and find that thing and you'll see it's grabbing right in here that's where it's grabbing that's the ear hole okay once you get those you pull down on the hide pull up on his elbow and then you can put your fingers between there pull down on the hide pull up on the elbow get your fingers in between there pull you don't have to trim their uh, their front legs they just pull off now you got a lot of jaw meat in here okay and you got to cut that so just lightly cut both sides okay right now his eyeballs are keeping that that hide on okay there's his eyebrows he's got little scent glands in there cut away from his eyes and toward it's alright if you get a little hair they don't care about the head away from his eye toward the skull okay so I got his eyes out and coming down on the on the bridge of his nose now you got this jaw meat I was talking about again you just cut straight across okay straight across and a muskrat and a beaver have both got the ability to eat underwater they can open their mouth and not get water down their throat so that their skin goes way up in here. Stick your knife straight in there both ways and it trims all of those tendons and everything. So you saw me just cut the tendons on the bottom of his jaw and his teeth. Right? And then you pick his teeth up and pull that hide out of there. Some people just cut that bottom lip off. I prefer to leave it on. And then just bam right there and that's what you got and then I'll come back again in a minute whenever I flesh one we'll flesh it and board it okay right now I just turn them inside out set it there so it doesn't dry out lower it down take that loop off and drop him down there get ready for the next one is on my right. I like the rat to face me so one is uh, one leg on the back one leg on the right. There's the tail, there's the tail. Side and side. Okay. Start up here at his lips. Get that little bit of jaw meat that's up there. Just work your way down. Using the butter knife which you don't have to worry about him uh, it cutting because it's a butter knife you're just scraping 
and all you're getting is the fat. You're not worried about the membrane. You just want the fat, right? Underneath this leg, a lot of times on top of the leg, this one's got a little bit, it's got fat. Underneath the leg, where the membrane starts, there's always a layer of fat right there. That's the, that's the main part of the fat on each side that you got to get off. And I'm, I'm not going lightly. I'm pressing down pretty good and scraping as, really as hard as I really can. Because it holds on. All my muskrats are cold whenever I flesh them, so it's harder to flesh fat in the cold. Then you go on down. There's always a layer of fat, depending on the muskrat, how much, around the bottom, around the base. There's always a layer of fat. You gotta get that off of there. Okay? So I'll work that side. That's clean. Take it, flip it 90 degrees, doesn't matter which 90 degrees. Start at the top, get the loose meat, work your way down, and you see that huge ball of fat coming off from right there. Leave that membrane on there though. They want that membrane on. In the front side of your fleshing bean. Work that fat all the way down. If you cut it, nick it, whatever, that's just part of it. And it doesn't mean it won't get used. We're just going to have to sell as a damaged fur, but you'll still get money for it. Take your time until you got a system. You know. Learn how to do it. This is my first season dealing with rats. Whenever I was in southeast Alaska, I dealt with mink. And I came here with the intention of trapping mink and fox. And there are not very many mink here. There are some. I caught two this year. But not many. But there are plenty of muskrats. So that changed. I changed to muskrats and mink and trying to get a fox. Last year I got a fox. This year I didn't even see a fox. I did see one fox track. Early season. I don't know if somebody got him or not. But it wasn't me. I knew that. So that's the last time I turn it right there. That's it. That's all. He's clean. This cloth that I have down here on the floor. I got a lot of mice out here in the shed and uh, they, they keep it cleaned off for me. Take a muskrat board. comfortably. Alright. Grab a pin, pull it down on the side. Grab a pin, pull it down on the side. I'm not stretching him. I'm just pulling him out to whatever size he is. 
you overstretch these things, you'll end up getting less money for them because they end up tearing and stuff. One on each side, and then one in the center on that tail flap. Now, whenever you take it off of here, you can leave the tail or you can cut it off. The front side, a lot of times, has meat and fat right here if you can't get it all off. Sometimes I cut that off. Not very appealing. Pull down on the corners. Pin it. Right there, pin it. Your wire stretchers. Right here is where you lose your your value. Because whenever it dries, it makes a little horseshoe shape go up. And whenever the laser measures it, it measures it from the lowest point all the way across. Well, if it dries and it's got that arch in it, it pushes that point up. And you can lose as much as two inches off of that. Get the belly board. Trust me, even though it's just a muskrat, use a belly board. Push that through there. Tail flap, come down on the side of the belly board and pin it. There you go. Fleshed and boarded muskrat. Put it in front of the fan and let it dry. Alright, I'm going to show you a wire stretcher. Here's a little secret some people do, some people don't. Got these little clips, little paper clips you get from the Wally World. So you bend your stretcher, slide him on in there. Stretchers are one size fits all. You want to make sure that his top lips come down over the top of that stretcher, because if not, his mouth will fall through there, and then you'll end up stretching his head all out of whack. Get him centered up on it, all right. And I'll do take a little bit of pressure and just get him straightened out there. And then I take, pull both tails, and I clip one on each side. And that's it. Take that fatty piece right there and stick it in that one. On the back side, you don't have that. There you go. Just like that. Yep. And then you hang him up like these they're easier to hang you hang these anywhere there you go so that's uh let's let's just look at the two of these let's compare them let's see remember whenever i was saying whenever it dries it dries in that hoop shape and you lose your money see how there's nothing there pulling it down right here so whenever it dries it pulls up it dries pulled up. Just look at these. They're roughly the same size. And you can tell the difference in that right there. Yeah. Gonna lose about two inches on these that are on the wire stretchers. That's the difference. There you go.